On Pentecost, we remember John the Baptist's promise in St. Luke's Gospel account. He says, One who is more powerful than I is coming. I baptize with water. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Today, we celebrate the coming of that Spirit and the fire that accompanied her. This is an important holiday for the Church. Just as Christmas celebrates the Incarnation and Easter celebrates the Resurrection, so Pentecost celebrates the pouring out of God's Spirit on the Church, on us. And yet on this holiday, I don't feel much like celebrating. In addition to the gruesome milestone of 100,000 COVID deaths in the United States that we saw this week, we also saw the death of George Floyd, yet another unarmed person of color who has died while in the custody of those who have been sworn to serve and protect him. George was arrested by Minneapolis police officers for allegedly using a counterfeit bill to buy cigarettes. While handcuffed, an officer knelt on George's neck for 8 minutes and 49 seconds, even as he begged for breath, even after he became unresponsive. To hear about this terrible and tragic event makes me angry. It makes me sad. It makes me wonder what is going on in our country that we could allow something like this to happen, not once, but again and again and again. It makes me lose hope. But what can I do? I'm just one person. So I feel bad for a while, a few minutes or a few days, and then I move on to other things. Because this did not happen in my neighborhood or to someone that I know, and so I can do that. Because I am a straight, white, cisgendered male, I cannot possibly imagine a situation in which this could ever happen to me. And so I'm able to forget it. That is my privilege. What good will it do for me to dwell on this? But that's the difference between me and the people who share George Floyd's zip code, or his family name, or his skin color. My privilege allows me to set this down and walk away from it. They cannot. They have no more power than I do. But because they have not only lost a loved one, they have also been reminded once again that any time they interact with the police, their lives are in danger. They cannot set this down. They are demonized and accused. When they demand justice, they are called they are dismissed as angry black people. They're told they should be obedient so these things don't happen to them. When they get angry and make themselves heard, they're called thugs and criminals. They have tear gas fired at them and dogs unleashed upon them. I've been thinking that the, that the problem isn't that there's nothing that I can do, but perhaps that I'm not angry enough to do anything. I can forget things like this too easily. They don't affect me as they should because I'm too far removed from the situation. If anything is to change, I need to be able to hold on to this as if George Floyd and all the others were my own family. If more of us white people got just as angry, if we stood alongside our siblings and, and lifted our voices with theirs as they demanded justice, perhaps those in power would listen before they demonized and accused. That's what I'm thinking about on this Pentecost, this holiday of fire. I'm thinking about all the people who are being held over the fire, and then when they struggle to get free, they have the knees of authority placed on their necks. But Pentecost isn't just a holiday about fire. It's a holiday about repentance and accountability when we leave this story today, Peter is not finished speaking. He's just getting warmed up. That picture he paints of the great and terrible day of the Lord is the setup for what comes next. In his sermon, Peter holds his Jerusalem audience accountable for what they have done. This Jesus, whom you crucified, he says, but unlike us, he does not demonize or accuse his listeners. Instead, he offers forgiveness, proclaims repentance. He shows a way forward. 
He holds his, account, his audience accountable for what they have done or failed to do, but only as he reminds them that they are all in this together. Because remember who this is that's speaking. This is Peter. Peter, the one who sank like a rock. Peter, the one to whom Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. Peter, the one who denied three times that he even knew Jesus. Peter knows what it means to disappoint, to fall short, to succumb to his own fear and inaction. Perhaps it is because of his own experience that he is able to stand before the crowds and to preach repentance. The people to whom he is speaking did not crucify Jesus. It was their Jewish leaders, the priests and scribes, and the people in power, Herod and Pilate, who signed his death warrant and ordered him to be crucified. But it was the voices of the crowds shouting, Crucify! Crucify! that moved their hands. Maybe some of these people were in those crowds. Maybe some of them shouted, Crucify! Or maybe they simply remained silent. But their silence allowed those shouts to ring out and direct the hands of the Roman government. When the infant church proclaimed the truth and held these people accountable, it grew. 3,000 people joined that day. Even more followed as the message of Jesus and the justice of God which vindicated him and raised him from the dead began to spread. The Church of Christ is born of repentance, just as each of us were baptized in the waters of repentance, washing away our sins and raising us to new life. And so even now the work of the Church continues to be rep proclaiming repentance for the forgiveness of sins. It's not enough to mourn George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Philando Castile and Atatiana Jefferson and Freddie Gray. The Holy Spirit continues to call us to proclaim repentance for the forgiveness of sins, to hold accountable those who have caused these things to happen. The Holy Spirit calls to us to repent, to repent of our silence, to repent of our forgetfulness, to repent of our making excuses, repent of our unwillingness to hold ourselves and those we place in power over us accountable. Our problem is that we too easily believe that these are isolated incidents. We believe that each of these atrocities is committed by bad people, or upon bad people who deserve it. We think that it's not our problem to deal with or to solve, that it won't happen here. I'll bet they never thought that it would happen in Minneapolis, or St. Louis, or Seattle, or Houston. The problem is not racists. The problem is racism. The problem is sin. This is the judgment, St. John says, that the light came into the world, but people love darkness rather than light. If we are to change, we need to admit that this isn't a problem caused by a rogue police officer here and there, or the environment in a single police department or city. We must confess the truth that we all walk in darkness. The truth that we killed George Floyd by our silence. That we crucified Jesus by our inaction. I'm not saying George Floyd was Jesus, but I am saying that Jesus was George Floyd. They were both victims of abusive and oppressive power. An empire who saw them as a threat and hung them on a cross to die as their breath slowly ebbed away while onlookers watched. Our sinfulness killed both of them. And today on Pentecost, we receive the good news that the one who has come to save us from our sin is still at work here, still bringing repentance and forgiveness. On Pentecost, we remember that it is upon us, the church, the disciples gathered in the house that Jesus breathed and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The light which has come into the world is now in us. 
It is that Holy Spirit that propelled the disciples out of the house to become apostles, proclaimers of the good news of God's healing forgiveness. It is that Holy Spirit that gave Peter the words of truth to proclaim, and it is that Holy Spirit that stirred the hearts of those listening and brought change. This is the Holy Spirit we celebrate today. This Holy Spirit of God that moves us to repent and allows us to become part of the solution rather than the problem. This is the Holy Spirit who arrives in wind and flame to shake us awake and drive us out of our houses and into the halls of power, into the streets, even into the lion's den. On this holiday celebrating fire, I'd like to ask you, how long can you sit with your hand over the flame? Sometimes the Spirit moves us by helping us feel the pain of others as if it is our own. For only when we feel the pain of others can we finally be motivated to stand alongside them and demand justice, to hold accountable, to proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Pentecost is a holiday celebrating accountability and justice, two things that we desperately need in our world today. Not just for George Floyd, not just for the people who die daily from poverty or hunger, not just for the people who are treated as criminals simply for seeking a new life in a new country, but for all of us. Today, Jesus comes among us and gives us peace. Peace such as the world cannot give. Today, we remember that we will only know justice, we will only know peace when we know justice. That without justice, there is no peace. Thanks be to the God of justice who sends the Holy Spirit to sweep us into costly discipleship and drive us into action, who finally gives us the peace of Christ.